Okay, so in the previous example, we estimated using the data analysis uh, facility, we used uh, regression, and the data analysis add-in was used to estimate the uh, coefficients for um, this relationship between test scores and student-teacher ratio. I'm going to run the same this time again in Excel, but I'm going to use Linest. So if we take the same data and copy and go into the next spreadsheet, worksheet, and then paste in uh, our results, and then uh, we can obtain the same results here, but, but by using uh, a user function. So uh, equal to Linest, and then open bracket. So Linest is a, f a function available in Excel. We must identify the dependent variable y, comma, the known nexus. There's only one column of incorporating in the explanatory variable here, but we could have more. And then, yes, we do want a constant in the relationship. And yes, we do want additional statistics including R squared and standard errors and so on. And then if we enter, we just get one output, uh, but we should be getting an array output. So we highlight a series of cells here and then holding three buttons together, control, shift, enter. So control, shift, enter together, and we get output. The results we obtain here we can copy, but just to note, this is, we reverse the order. So this is uh, A, and this would be B. So if we were to look at our previous output from R and Excel, right, from the data analysis, right, what we have is this output. So we can see the coefficient is 713, the uh, coefficient on the student-teacher ratio is negative 2.968 and so on. Okay, so maybe we can actually put that below. So I'll cut and I'll paste below. And we might see why in a moment, just to make a little bit of space here. Um, Okay, so we would we would like to um, one of the things we would like that uh, R does very well is to graph to run a scatter graph. We would like to generate a scatter graph as well in Excel. So to run the scatter graph, we just go to insert. In fact, we can highlight both columns here go to insert, go to scatter graph, and we didn't, can take our values. And we have a scatter graph outlining on the horizontal axis. Horizontal axis, we have the x values 15, 17, 25, so the student-teacher ratio. On the vertical axis, we have the uh, test score. Okay. So one of the things, so we can say, maybe graph that, we could write this as being a student-teacher ratio versus a test scores, test scores, okay. And, okay, we would like to introduce then, what is the model fit? So normally we try to put in a, a line of best fit. One of the outputs of OLS is we generate the model, the mo what's predicted by the model. And our model here is that the coefficient is 713. Let's F4 to lock the cell reference. Okay, so let's 
F4 to lock the cell reference escape. So equal to um, lock the cell reference, hit F4 plus, and then we have our beta and lock the cell reference, F4. So try that again, Fn, F4, and then we multiply multiply by the uh, x value okay so the independent value <clears throat> and for a value of x where x is equal to 15 student teacher ratio equal to 15 then our model predicts a test score of 669 and we can repeat that exercise and we come down uh, seven times Okay, so one more time. And you can see that the in each instance the values were taking the intercept and then taking the coefficient on the student teacher ratio, multiplying by the student teacher ratio and getting a predicted value or a model fit. Right? So we might say a model fit or sometimes y hat. Okay, and then we can include that in. Okay, so we can add that to our graph. Insert, select data, and then uh, we can call this uh, raw data, the original data, so raw data. And then we can add uh, model fit, model fit, and then our x values are our original student teacher ratios and then the model fit is derived from the coefficients in the model and for each x there's a predicted y okay and okay and then we can take that right we can take this and add if you like a tread line and that's fine um And you can see our values now we could um, do a couple of things here one is we could format access so that we include a maximum value of the intercept the intercept was 713 so maybe the maximum value might be 720 okay and we could see that it would cut approximately if we continued this along it would cut at 7.13. So for instance, if if I change the value here to zero, uh, which mm, then the value that would appear here would be uh, 713. Now one way we could do that, if now if we change this here, it'll change the other values, but I can perhaps copy and then paste special, paste special, and just put in values. So any changes that I make here won't affect here. And if this became zero, then you could see we cut the coefficient. We cut the axis at 713, 713. Okay, now I'll undo those changes. I right, to go back to where we started and just keep the function live. Um, okay, so... Uh, we can take a look at our studio and just see what results are available to us. Okay, um, so we ran a scatter graph, right, from the data set that we had. We ran a scatter graph, we outputted the linear model, so we ran the OLS estimation using LM and the test score being the dependent variable, STR being the independent variable. We had run the output, got linear model output, and then a summary, which is uh, included T stats and um, standard error and T stats. Uh, in Excel, just if we have this Linest function uh, to get to obtain the T stats, now this is the coefficient. Let's just um, put in coefficient here, coefficient. Below we have standard error, 
Then we have r squared. The 31% is r squared. So I'll just put r power of 2. And to get the t stats, the t stats, t stats, which are important for looking at the statistical significance, if we take the coefficients and divide by the standard error, we get t stats. And we notice that the t stat is quite low for the coefficient on the student teacher ratio. Okay, so let's just format this so we can observe a little bit more cleanly. Okay, and so so these are the coefficients, standard error, the r squared, and then finally here we have t stats in our estimation. Let's just observe that in R Studio. So if we go back into R for a moment and we want to plot the line of best fit. Um, okay, so plot the test score relative to the student teacher ratio and then include scatter plot. So this is the label main scatter main label here would be scatter plot of test score and student teacher ratio on the x axis x label str on the y label test score and then we're going to take the range 10 to 30 on the horizontal or x axis and y axis is going to stretch from 600 to 720 so let's run that and we put in an ab line that's the line of best fit okay so these are our raw data and now we want to put in the line of best fit using the linear model we estimated using OLS okay and we get line of best fit okay and this is one of the uh, important uh, results of our model does this line of best fit best describe the relationship between the x and the y variable uh, we can also just pull out the coefficients, so that would be the 2 .9, negative 2.98 and or 96, and then the intercept of 713. We could estimate the residuals, and the residuals come from subtracting uh, the data point from the line the best fit. So the residual 2 is the difference between the we can estimate this by just considering uh, the difference between, well, we'll just paste in the res residuals uh, first of all. And just to note how we estimate the residual, we have the actual y and estimated y. So model fit is the estimated y taking the difference between the two yields the residual. So in this instance here, that would imply just taking the actual y, y, that's the true y, minus the y from the line of best fit. Okay, and we get 1095, and then we pull that down. We get negative 23, we get 1282, four, negative 436. Okay, so the residuals are basically the true y, the true y, and we subtract away the model fit which is the orange color here okay so this is the output from linest it's uh, quite versatile um, in terms of running the estimation and we get a full suite of coefficients standard errors r squared and we can generate ourselves then uh, t statistics and if we go back into our studio for a moment and we develop further some of the content. Uh, we can produce an ANOVA output. And in a moment, we'll give this a little bit of uh, inspection. But to, to understand ANOVA, we need to generate the residual sum of squares, the total sum of squares, the explained sum of squares, and show how we generate the R squared. And from there, we can have a look at our ANOVA results and look at the overall goodness of fit in terms of the relationship.